Hello, I'm Dr. Ron Eaglin coming to you from Daytona State College. This is Human Computer Interaction, and our presentation today is title of presentation. Don't. Our title today is Human Error, and let's talk a little bit about mistakes. All right, so what we want to understand today is making mistakes and how you can actually design systems that are going to prevent mistakes, because mistakes can sometimes have severe consequences. And we're going to understand the differences between slips and mistakes and understand how all of these are errors and how we can minimize the effects of these errors. So there's a lot of different types of slips, and what we want you to do is be able to understand what these slips are. In fact, what I really want you to do is I want you to literally memorize the different types of slips, not so much worrying about the forcing functions that you can use to prevent the slips, but understanding just pure human nature of all the different ways that we can slip up. So first, let's look at a, a case scenario of, of the consequences of just simple human error. So in 1998, Russia was sending a Phobos satellite actually to the Phobos moon of Mars. Very expensive satellite. It takes a lot of effort to get something off to Mars. Satellite is, satellite is up there. It's taking incredible pictures of the moon of Phobos. It's taking um, pictures, and there's actually the Phobos too, a slip. And it was taking pictures of Mars. And then all of a sudden, it just goes haywire and spins out of control and disappears. And that's the end of the mission. Now, what actually occurred? Well, if you go to the internet and actually ask what occurred, it's gonna be because the UFO came and, and the, the Phobos satellite got a picture of the aliens and the aliens couldn't have that being transmitted back to Earth. Well, there's your conspiracy theorists. And there's some really interesting conspiracies out there. But what actually happened was we were sending, we, or the Russians, were sending information to the satellite commands. And these commands were sent in basically letter sequences, which would be typed in and then transmitted to the satellite. It's about a 30 minute trip for that transmission to get from here to Mars. And one of those transmissions caused the satellite to go into essentially what's called a test mode. And that was the end of that. Now, the question in this is, who was at fault? Okay, and you know what? I'm not gonna answer that question in this lecture. Part of the reason is, is because one of your um, projects in the class is gonna be to look a little bit deeper into some of these different things and determine fault. But let's look at some of the parameters surrounding what could be at fault. First, electrical noise signal reliability. Okay, you're sending a message from Earth to a satellite that's orbiting Mars, and electrical noise oftentimes can cause the actual coding to have changed. Okay, and designers use things called correction codes to be able to correct for this. Now, in the case of the Phobos satellite, the signal itself was sent up to Mars, but it actually caused the, the satellite to go into an existing mode that actually existed that caused the entire thing to malfunction. The question here is, was it a design error or was it an operational error? Okay, error codes were standard practice. Sending things to Mars that way is also standard to, to satellites. It's standard practice to send signals that are just, you don't have a lot of time to send very complex stuff up there. But who is at fault here? Okay. Well, the truth of the matter is, without even answering that question, is people make mistakes. Designers make mistakes. Satellite operators make mistakes. Humans are good at a lot of things. We're good at creativity. We're very adaptable. We're very flexible. We can do all sorts of amazing things. What we're not real good at is alertness and precision. We actually admire people that are amazing at alertness and precision. Our ability to do the same thing over and over again, completely repetitive with exactly the same each time is amazingly bad. 
okay? And people that are very good at doing the same thing over and over again are called golfers. Same thing each time, perfectly executed, okay? So let's look at how we can design for human error. Now, realize that the things that humans are bad at, humans are, uh, you know, computers are actually quite good at. Computers don't mind doing the same thing exactly the same over and over again, which we are actually pretty bad at. But computers cannot read simple things like, you can still read this sentence, but a machine can't. Take all the vowels out, machine is at completely at a loss. Now, we can help program a machine to be better at doing that and give options, but most humans can look at a sentence like that and figure it out without even needing to be told that what it was done was that the vowels were removed, okay? Machines don't tolerate errors very well. So, we have to design systems that account for the concept of just humans making mistakes. It's, in many cases, it's not that tremendously difficult to do. Many times it's just providing sufficient feedback for the common things that humans might do. So for example, if you try to print and your printer is out of paper, well, that might not necessarily be an error, it just might have just run out of paper, but a simple feedback mechanism to say, hey, by the way, you're out of paper, please go put some paper in the printer, and then we're gonna retry this again every five seconds until it actually works. Another better example, which is one of my favorites, is in the Outlook 360 program. If you start typing and you mention this attachment in your email message that you forgot to attach, which by the way, people do all the time. I've also get the, here's the mail. Oh, by the way, here's the attachment that goes with the mail that I just sent. Well, Outlook will actually say, you mentioned this attachment, but you didn't attach anything. Are you sure you want to send this thing without an attachment? Okay, a simple error, okay, simple solution. Okay, designing for human error, that easy. So let's talk about errors. Mistakes and slips. And is it really important that you have just a solid understanding of the difference between a mistake and a slip? Not really, okay, but a mistake is when you establish an intent to act and the intention is not appropriate. It's not what you actually should do. We call that a mistake, okay? If the intent is appropriate, however, the action didn't work out so well or was it what, you know, that's a slip, okay? It's all based on intent. Again, not terribly important because the outcomes are often just the same, okay? We want the intent to be correct and the action to be correct. It's gonna be much easier to design for making those actions correct, so dealing with slips is much easier than dealing with errors. However, you also need to deal with errors. So let's look at some types of slips. We call them slips, it actually is the technical term we're gonna to use to deal with them. So the concept of the capture error. Hmm. Now, what is a capture error? Well, if you do something all the time, it becomes just something that you do. But now you've got to do something that's slightly different. Your bind may just automatically go one direction when you actually need to go the other direction. That is a capture error. It happens all the time. Most mornings I have to get up and turn left, okay, 99% of the time, but every now and then I need to go right, and guess what? I still turn left, because you know what? It's what I do all the time, okay? I've gotten my brain into that autonomous process of going a specific direction, and I really didn't intend to go that way. You might do that while you're typing, okay? It's just you go that way. Now, how can you design for that? Well, one of the things that you can do in design is that there's some series of actions that are performed by a user frequently, don't make a series of actions that is similar. For in other words, um, a, similar, a, a common action that people may do is the copy, paste, control C or control V, which people do very quickly on the type, you know, people that are expert at this. And you may want to make control C, control W be erase all. 
probably not the best way to do it. Okay, control C, control V, common action. So also, so that's basically separating the other action from the common action. Also making sure that you've got a good feedback mechanism so that you actually know what is going on. And one of the most challenging is the context. Understand the context of when a user should be doing something and be able to provide warnings whenever they're doing something that doesn't match that. Okay, now, of course, many times they may want to do it. Okay, another one, description error. Now, description errors are incredibly common because you don't know what the thing does, okay? That is incredibly common because, and, and, I, and those are the ones I hate most of all because I'm like, okay, should I hit the button that says remove? I don't know what remove is going to do. I don't want it to remove it and leave. Okay. okay, you need to not be ambiguous. Okay, you need to be extremely clear in what the commands do, an understanding of the command structure. So, clearly differentiated options. Okay, and, and okay, a good, one, a good example, one of my favorites on this one is you got a row of 15 switches, they all look exactly alike. They may actually have a, a description by each of them. And you go flip, 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 flip. Oh, by the way, the seventh one is not supposed to be flipped. Flip, 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 flip. Wait, that is a bad design. If it's going to be common that one through six are flipped, seven is not, and then the rest of them are flipped, probably need to take that one over there and move it somewhere else. Bad design, okay? Obviously, as always, providing a feedback about what the occurrence is going to be, okay? And one of the things that's really dangerous about these types of description errors is oftentimes you can have the slip occur and not know that you've done it. You leave the pump running. You leave this on. You leave that off and the other things are supposed to be on. Not good. Another slip. Data-driven error. Okay, <laughs> This is one everybody loves. You do it all the time. Hmm, I'm thinking about something. I'm doing something. Unfortunately, what I'm doing and what I'm thinking shouldn't be, aren't really the same thing. But what I'm thinking ends up going to what I'm doing. Okay, or, okay, <laughs> calling somebody, don't call your wife by the wrong name because you're thinking about somebody else. Not a good thing. How can you avoid this? Well, just avoid it. Um, how can you avoid this? One thing is if you're in a situation where, or where the consequences of making this type of slip are severe, you need to make sure that there's a minimization of distractions that actually occur in the first place. But if the intent of the user is one thing, if it's predictable, Provide clues to make sure that they're actually on the right track. Just giving intelligent suggestions to the user in your user interface design can help avoid these. Loss of activate. Oh, that's right. I'm here. Yeah. Oh, what is loss of activation? It's when you're in midstream and all of a sudden you just blank out. Okay, it happens. Okay. <laughs> favorite, you're dialing on the phone, you get the person on the phone, you're waiting for it to ring, and by the time they answer, you've completely forgotten why you called them in the first place. <laughs> you're not, and it's too late to hang up now. That is a loss of activation error, okay? And you can prevent these two by actually giving, you know, visual cognitive clues of what to go on. Help the user stay on track. Help them remember where they are. And the la one of the last ones that I've got here, the good old mode error. Well, the worst mode error is the all caps. If you ever typed an email and, or have just been typing and then you look at what you're typing and then you realize, I had just been typing with the caps lock on and now I'm gonna have to go back and retype the whole thing. Well, that happens and that's the concept of modes if you're in mode A or mode B. Now, the best way to deal with mode errors is just 
don't have modes in the first place. But many times in the design, you're going to have to have modes. You're going to have to be able to do very complex actions. And the only way really to do that is to be in a specific mode. If you're going to be in a mode, make sure there's some solid visual cue to let the user know that they are in a specific mode. Okay? And also, just make it easy to correct Okay, say, hey, you just typed everything in all caps. You want to go back and fix that, by the way? Okay, I can do that. Now, bottom line is you're going to need to design for errors. So we're going to need to know a little bit about the different forcing functions. Essentially, what do you do when you've got these possibilities of errors um, occurring? So uh, these are some just basic forcing functions. Forcing function means, hey, we're going to make you do this or at least warn you. The first forcing function we're going to deal with is the gag. Okay, don't let them do it, okay? Prevents the user from continuing if you're in an air state. Simple one like that is saying, hey, look, um, you can only lock the door to your car if your keys are not in it, okay? Can't make the mistake in the first place, okay? Just prevent it. The other one is the good old warning, okay? Hey, do you really want to overwrite that file? Do you really want to end without saving? Do you really want to start driving on the interstate without your seat belt on? Okay, simple things. One, the good old do nothing. If you're not allowed to do it, don't, just don't do it. Got a real problem though. This often causes user Feedback, you hit that button, I've been hitting that button for over and over again, and nothing is happening. Well, the reason it's not doing anything is because if you did do it, it would mess up the system, okay? But there's no visible, there's no visible cue, no feedback, okay? You, you want to have something happening there. This one leads to all sorts of humor, the self-correct, okay? You got the self-correct, it's on every phone, and whenever you're sending out text messages, it loves to change the word that you intended to a word that you never intended with all sorts of interesting consequences. But the reality is, is that the self-correct also changes a lot of garbage words into something that are actually real world words. The only thing is, the problem that you have many times is that the dictionary just gets to be a little bit of humorous. Well, that's human error. Summary. What you've learned, there are mistakes, there are errors, there are slips. Users will make errors, period. Designers must design for those human errors. Good design will prevent many of those errors. Deal with the severity of the error and do, make sure that you know, it's a severe, if an error has a severe consequence, that you have some sort of good feedback or stopping mechanism to prevent it. Understand the different types of slips, know what kind of errors users are going to make, what kind of slips users are going to make, and prevent them. Do that, you'll have some really amazing designs and some very happy users. Thank you very much. This is Dr. Ron England from Daytona State College.